He was one of Hollywood's original one-name stars. When the marquee said, Bogart, the world got in line. Today's Inside Story, movie tough guy Humphrey Bogart, as you have never seen him before. Of all the gin joints in all the towns in all the world, she walks into mine. Humphrey Bogart is back on the big screen in one of his classic tough guy roles with the current re-release of Casablanca in theaters. Audiences love him now as much as Ingrid Bergman did in the film. He has a, a real charisma about him that you just don't find in a lot of actors today. He's the coolest ever. I stick my neck out for nobody. But the real Bogart wasn't the cynical man from the streets he portrayed on screen. He was born with a silver spoon in his mouth to a wealthy New York society family. His mother was an illustrator who loved to draw her baby, Humphrey DeForest Bogart, according to his biographer and friend, Joe Hyams. His father had, was descended from a long line of Dutch burgers, and he was a third-generation American. They lived on the Upper East Side in one of the most posh and elegant neighborhoods. But much to the dismay of his father, who wanted him to be a doctor, Bogart chose an acting career. After success in theater, he came to Hollywood and eventually made it big in films like The Maltese Falcon and Casablanca. But his personal life was far rockier, says his friend and sometime agent, Irving Swifty Lazar. When he was in his cups, he was tough. I had to once rescue him in Paris from a three o'clock in the morning uh, visit to the Lido. For no reason, he wanted to see all the girls. Bogart's hard-drinking ways hit a peak with his third wife, Mayo Metho. Their tempestuous relationship earned them the nickname the Battling Bogarts. Bogie once told me that she, she got him drinking and kept him drinking, and that's how she held on to him. They drank a lot. They would fight. His boat was called the Sluggy. Uh, their home was called Sluggy Hollow. In their divorce settlement, Bogart had to give Metho one of the Safeway supermarkets he owned. But it was a whole different story with his fourth for? wife. I'm wondering whether I'd like it. Lauren Bacall was 19 and Bogart was 45 when they made To Have and Have Not in 1944. They married a year later, but it wasn't the bride who cried at the ceremony. It was tough old Bogie who was crazy about his new wife. He was as faithful to his marriage as you could possibly be. He was quite extraordinary. Together they weathered unfounded charges that Bogie was a communist sympathizer when he opposed the Hollywood blacklist. They also made several more movies together, but that wasn't his idea, said Bacall in a 1989 interview. Bogey never believed in giving parts to his wife or getting involved in her career like many husbands do these days. Diagnosed with fatal cancer in 1956, Bogey would still put on a brave front to receive guests even when he was too weak to walk. Bogey's valet would dress him in his bedroom, uh, put him in his clothes, and then get a wheelchair, push him over the dumb waiter shaft, which was in the bedroom, lower him to the floor below, then pick him up again and wheel him into the den. And then he'd sit him in the chair, give him his props, the cigarette and the martini glass, and Bogey would be waiting for the company like that. When he died in January of 1957, all of Hollywood mourned. More heroic in personal life than even his toughest roles on screen, Humphrey Bogart lived life to the fullest and left it with courage and dignity. He's looking at you, kid. Casablanca, incidentally, is celebrating its 50th anniversary and will be shown in selected cities across the country over the next six months. On our Inside Story tomorrow, actress Grace Lee Whitney says when she was fired from Star Trek, she sank to the depths of degradation with alcohol and men. I became that woman who would look at a man and through wanting to, to feel powerful and loved and needed, I would try to seduce that man, you see. And that became an addiction. Now there's a new life and career for Grace Lee Whitney beamed back aboard Star Trek. Our inside story tomorrow on Entertainment Tonight.